Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Um, this is video number. Today, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up remote access. Now, I know there's a few ways we can set this up, but the best option that we have is going to be making use of the um, Home Assistant Cloud platform itself. I know it is a subscription-based service, so you do pay like $5. But keep in mind that that goes to Home Assistant and that'll help the improvement of the program itself as well. So I don't have an issue supporting them at all. And I feel like it's a lot safer using it that way instead of exposing your own uh, installation to the internet. And we can rather use a third party like Home Assistant, which we'll know is a lot more secure than opening up our own uh, ports to Home Assistant. So with that said, let's quickly go ahead and take a look. There we go, guys. So we're back in here, and as you can see, everything still looks exactly the same. I didn't make a single change since the last time we um, did the automation, so everything is set up today. Um, I will go ahead and show you guys how to add the phone tracking in here as well, because that's going to be part of setting up the remote access. Now, to set this up, this is going to be fairly quick and easy. The only thing you need to do is you go ahead and click on the configuration option down here. And then you'll see the very first option in here is called Home Assistant Cloud. Now, another cool thing about this is it'll also allow you to... Um, access your Google, uh, access your Home Assistant through your Google Assistant as well. So you can go ahead and ask Google to turn off your lights and all that information would integrate. So all your entities you have in Home Assistant would automatically be available in Google Home as well. So to enable it, all we need to do is we can go ahead and click on Home Assistant Cloud. Now you do have the option right here that uh, allows you to get a free one month trial that you can test out. And if you're skeptical, you can go ahead and give that a try, but I already have an account, so I'm just quickly gonna go ahead and log in here. And then... sign in and just wait for that to quickly sign in and there we go as you can see i did sign in so the status is uh it's busy connecting it should uh it's just fetching my user information and there we go and you'll see all of the information is up there now a few things in here we can take a look at um once that starts to sync all the information um it'll give you a option right here it's going to go ahead and give you a remote url that you'll be able to use in any browser um, as long as you have internet and your Raspberry is connected to the internet, you'll be able to go ahead and access your Home Assistant from that URL in any browser at any location, which is exactly what we would like to have. But if we scroll a bit down, you'll see we have Alexa integration, so you can go ahead and enable that if you have a um, Amazon Echo. And then we also have the Google Assistant. So if you do have Google Assistant, you can go ahead and enable that as well. So mine is already enabled uh, because I did log in previously. I'm just going to go ahead and wait for that to load. So while we do that, if we go ahead and open up our phone, we can already go ahead and install the Home Assistant apps. So right here, I have my phone open or a backup phone in here. So what we can do on here is I opened up the Play Store. So this is an Android phone. I just opened up the Play Store. I searched for Home Assistant. And because this is a fairly new app, um, they released it just a couple of months ago. I can go ahead and hit the install here. If you have an iPhone, they already have a fairly good app available to you. So we can go ahead and install that. And then once that's completed, I'll show you guys how to set it up as well. There we go, guys. So Ed finally went ahead and gave me the URL that I'll need to use for my app in Home Assistant. So once that's installed, we can just go ahead and open up that app. 
And then right here in Home Assistant itself, you'll see that there is a URL listed right here. And you can go ahead and use that URL, meaning if you use that URL, you'll be able to access your Home Assistant through the app wherever you are in the world, as long as your Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet. So as you can see in the app, it doesn't give me um, any option or it says that it didn't find any instance. We just need to go ahead and enter the address manually. And right here, we're gonna go ahead and enter in this URL right here. And then also add the port 8123 at the end. And that'll go ahead and take us to the login page. So let me go ahead and quickly enter that in because it's quite a long URL. So just give me one second. So I entered in that uh, URL and added in the port 8123 at the end. So I'm just waiting for that to load up the interface. And as you can see right here, it's asking me to enter in my username and password. And for this one, it was demo for the username. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the password. Hit next. just wait for that to log in real quick registering application it's going to ask us to allow location access I'm gonna say yes because I do want to use this for presence detection and there we have it so once we are in here it's just going to take a minute to load up all the entities that we have in here there is one more thing we need to go ahead and enable in the app itself so let's just wait for it to load up real quick there we go now in here all i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and open up the menu and then in the app configuration I'm going to make sure that my zone based tracking and my background location tracking is enabled. That'll allow me to see if this cell phone or this person, the owner of the cell phone is home or not. You can also go ahead and edit a the device name if you have a, if you'd like a way of identifying the device, but that should be it. And the entity should now be registered within home assistant itself. So let's quickly go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so back in Home Assistant, so in order to link that device to a specific user, um, all we need to do is we can go ahead and click on the configuration, then click on devices, and then you'll see right here, it does show me that device is listed in here. It says it's a mobile app and it gives us no area. So what we could do now is we can link this device to a specific user. We can overwrite the name and call it uh, uh, something more familiar that you'll be able to use. But for me, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and go back to configuration, click on persons. And then I'm gonna add a additional person. So remember we added in that user. Now we can add in an additional person. So the person that we would like to track. And remember this one was named demo. So I'm just gonna use demo again. And then the linked user, we can just link it to the demo user. And then we can pick the specific device to track. So if I click down here, you'll see it has that cell phone right here. And as soon as we click on it, click on create, that'll go ahead and add in the demo user as well. So now if we go back to the overview all the way to the top, you'll see it doesn't show the user yet. So all we need to do is we can go ahead and edit the UI. Then all the way up here where it says home, you can go ahead and click the edit button and it'll show you badges right here. And as soon as we click on it, we can go ahead and add a person and select the demo. So if we go down, right here it says person.demo. That's the demo that we added in here. So as soon as we click on it, hit save, you'll see right here demo is currently showing as home. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope that it did provide some useful information for you guys to use. 
if you guys do get stuck you can go ahead and ask in the comments down below and i'd be i'd be happy to assist as best as i can um as you guys know this is um going over the cloud and updating the information i'm not sure if you guys noticed but i'm uh big advocates of having all your devices local, especially living in a third world country. Um, it is quite hard to get a stable connection and sometimes the internet goes down, sometimes the power goes out. So I'll be looking at a whole lot of solutions in that sense as well. And with that said, um, if you guys do have any questions or ideas of something you'd like me to do, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Um, so with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day.